Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back. This is going to go up pretty late, probably around 6, probably only about an hour before lock, so I'm sorry about that. We'll get more consistent starting uh, in the next week, uh, but we'll break down the slate. I'll get something out at least for those guys that check back an hour before lock. So let's get into this. We'll go through it nice and quick. So starting out with the Spurs really only have one preferred play on the Spurs, and that's Kawhi Leonard, if he is in fact ruled in. We will know that uh, this game um, is one of the first games of the night, so we will know. Uh, I expect to see 20, 24 to 28 minutes from Kawhi tonight, if he in fact goes. If he doesn't, then it even boosts him more for the next time that he goes. Should see maybe a little bit of a boost if he sits out tonight, so I have no concerns either way whether he plays or doesn't play tonight, but... Um, he is pretty much my only lean on San Antonio. You can look at um, Aldridge and Gasol if he does indeed sit. If not, then uh, Kawhi is my only interest. So moving on to Detroit, pretty much only have a couple of leans here. Ish Smith at 5500 saw a nice price bump from the 4900 but still value in a $5,500 price tag. Needs about 30 to hit my personal value, 32, 31, 32 hit my personal value. He didn't take a shot early in this game. Uh, and so I expect him to shoot a little bit more tonight. We'll see. Uh, it's against the Spurs. Um, blowout potential, but I do like him tonight. Um, don't think he sees seven rebounds again, but maybe uh, maybe 20, maybe a little bit more six, 27 and five. Uh, maybe he gets a few more assists and a little bit less rebounds. Um, should see again around 32 minutes, I would assume. Uh, and so... Langston Galloway saw about 16, saw the 16 backup point guard minutes last time, so that's the interesting, that's the interesting part right there. Um, then we have, let's see here, we have the different forwards. We have Reggie Bullock and Stanley Johnson. Bullock didn't see much of a price increase, saw a $500 price increase, which is probably enough to push me off of him. He just doesn't do enough in his minutes. I mean, he shot efficiently. He just doesn't see enough shots for me. Um, he's probably relatively safe for 20 points, but I will probably not be going there tonight. Stanley Johnson just didn't see the minutes as well. Only saw 24 and then didn't shoot well. He started the game out 2 for 2, I believe, 1 for 1 from 3, um, but then just didn't contribute much after that. So that kind of hurt his production. Uh, and that's about it. Langston Galloway didn't see it. I'm not going to play Drummond. I guess you could go to Tobias Harris, who seems to be soaking up all the usage with Reggie Jackson gone, but still did not put in an excessively good performance against the bad Orlando team. Um, so Ish Smith is my lean with interest in Bullock, Stanley Johnson, and, uh, and Tobias. So moving on to Miami, uh, we still have the injuries of Waiters out, um, James Johnson out, and Justice Winslow out. So that brings back into play Josh Richardson and Tyler Johnson. Goran Dragic, interesting at 5,900, but probably won't go there. Um, still, He's still not playing minutes. 30 minutes is his like ceiling. Is like The most the Heat will play him is 30 minutes. And I think it just chokes and limits his upside a lot. It just, it just really limits his upside, um, and it lowers his floor. So I probably won't go there. I do like Tyler Johnson tonight, 5,800. He's been pretty consistent for his 30. Um, he had 19 last night, but he shot 4 of 15, got his minutes cut short, and uh, didn't contribute much in the other categories like he usually does. So I have no worries. His price went down a little bit, and he gets a better match, or he gets about a neutral matchup here with uh, with Orlando uh, compared to Brooklyn. So I'll go ahead and ride it. And you can also look at Josh Richardson, 6,500, should be good to get you near 30, a um, little bit below value, but possibility for upside the issue is, is he has pretty much next to zero upside for um a double double bonus um he he can get there like he had seven rebounds against orlando but uh not not in huge love with josh richardson uh, i think he's safe for around 30 but i don't think i'm gonna go there white side at 6700 is interesting but he's just not playing any minutes um he's got his uh He's got the minutes restriction, kind of, uh, and so while he has the upside for 35, 30 points, um, he's 6,700, so I'm not taking that risk. Uh, so moving on to Orlando, Vooch remains out, but Biombo is 5,300 against Whiteside. I probably won't go there. Um, he needs about, 
he needs about 16 and 16 to really like absolutely murder your knight and end you so i'm not gonna go there i don't think he gets the 16 and 16 so we're gonna pass on him uh maybe a mistake but other than that everybody is in except isaac and ross so i'm not gonna go to orlando tonight moving on to the knicks I uh, have like one preferred play on here. I guess Cantor and Porzingis will have to play. You can't really sit them um, uh, against uh, Boogie and Brow. The thing with Boogie and Brow is they played 42 and 44 minutes last night. Um, I think Boogie played 44 and Brow. Yeah, Boogie played 44 and Brow played 42. And so I'm probably just going to fade them all to get i'm just gonna fade the boogie and brow i don't know i doubt they get their minutes restricted at all but i just probably won't go there tonight uh hardaway remains out but it's probably just porzingis uh canter and frank nitalikina 3900 for nitalikina he saw 32 minutes his minutes have been going progressively up but they also went up earlier this year and then went back down so I don't know exactly what to make of this. I probably won't go to Frank Canitalikina. He needs about 25 to burn me. I don't think he gets 35 again. Um, he had three steals in that game. Take away three steals, he's down to 29. Um, and so I, I just... And nine is actually a pretty high scoring total for Frank Canitalikina. So you probably take a little bit more points away from that. Um, take a couple assists away as well. I don't know. I just don't think he gets there. So I probably won't be going there tonight. But he looks to be not a chalky play, but um, a little bit of an interesting play. Uh, on the Pelican side, I probably won't play anybody here. Uh, there's some interesting plays like Drew Holiday. Um, but they all saw high minutes last night. And while I don't think they all they see any rest, Rondo's the one that didn't play much last night. But... I don't think they see rest or anything crazy like that. Um, I just think they might not see their full, like 36 or 35 for Boogie instead of 44. Uh, so that's what's kind of keeping me off of that. Uh, on the Trailblazers, the only thing of importance here is whether or not Damian Lillard plays. He's 8,200. He's questionable tonight. Uh, game's at 730, so I hope we get the news, but I, it's not a guarantee that we get the news. And so if he is solid and good to go... Probably no interest on Portland, even though it's a nice pace-up game. If I get news that Damian Lillard does not have a minutes restriction and he's good to go, I might end up playing him. I mean, I'm assuming they sat him out last night. So was it, was it last, two nights ago? They played two nights ago. I think they played, yeah, they played two nights ago, right? Yeah, they played two nights ago. Um, oh, hold on, I can't look at his game log. Played two nights ago. Yeah, they played two nights ago. Um, against Philly, and I think they might have just set him out in turns to get him to play tonight. If he sits, I'll go back to C.J. McCollum and Shabazz Napier. Um, yeah, Napier has just been crushing with with uh, Lillard out, so I will I will go back. Napier only needs about 27 for me to be happy with him, and McCollum needs about 40, so I, I think they can both get there. So I'll probably go, be going hard back to McCollum and Napier. Uh, if Lillard plays, I have a lot of interest in Lillard if there's no minutes restriction. Um, if I, if I get the all clear that he's a hundred percent good, I'll, I'll take 90%, like 85, 90% Damian Lillard against the Hawks. I'll take it and I'll play Damian Lillard. So moving on to Atlanta, pretty much no interest here. Um, Torian Prince is interesting. Um, I'm not chasing this 52. I just like his consistency. Um, he has, he has like a 20, 20 to 25 point uh consistency um he 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 was a lot more consistent like if you go back past this cleveland game and new york game he was a lot more consistent for like 25 every game uh kind of like a trevor ariza but he's kind of gotten a little bit more sporadic um he, he his floor is not bad um he only played 23 minutes in this detroit game so i kind of x that out um because he's gonna play 30 ish minutes uh, 30 to 36 minutes um he's a little under a fantasy point per minute performer so you can expect somewhere between 20 and 30 it's kind of a wide range of outcomes and probably somewhere i won't need to go tonight but i do like him kent way more uh if he was a thousand cheaper i'd go there but he's he's become a little bit like before the cleveland game he was kind of sporadic and all over the place and now he's turned into the consistent guy so it's kind of they've kind of had a role reversal here but uh, Bazemore has not been seeing the minutes that Prince has been seeing. Uh, if Bazemore was seeing into the 30s, I'd definitely play him tonight. But at 6,100, I don't think we need to go there. 
Moving on to Cleveland, you've got the one major stud of the night, and that's LeBron at 11-5 against Utah. I think they blow Utah out, so I probably won't go to LeBron. I mean, he's going to need to really kill you on this late. He's going to need 66, 67 to really kill you unless no other player, unless other players in the 8K, 7K range aren't hitting value or overvalue. LeBron is going to need 66, 67 to kill you. If if there's issues, then I guess LeBron will only need like 55 to kill you, but I probably won't go there. Um, he's going to be safe for roughly 60. Um, I know I'm passing up 60 points. Um, but in turn, I'm going to take the risk and probably fade him. If he puts up the 75, I lose. I mean, I'll just take the loss. But um, I, I think they blow Utah out. They they had the dud against Golden State on Christmas where LeBron probably got fouled, but he was like, I, I don't get why LeBron's complaining about about getting fouled on like just it's it's a regular season game like just give it up like no one cares you'll probably get that call in the finals just let it go um and then they got waxed by the kings and vince carter can't believe vince carter scored 24 points real life 24 points from vince carter um and so i assume they come out here and they lay it on the jazz i mean the Jazz, the Jazz held strong with the Warriors, but it was the Stephen Curryless Warriors and Draymond and Clay are still kind of nicked up, and so I, I just think the Cavs blow them out, and I think it limits LeBron's upside. I mean, LeBron's going to contribute to the blowout, but I think LeBron, while I love LeBron tonight, I I just think I can get there with other guys. Other than that, on Cleveland, I don't like anybody, so we'll move on to the Jazz. The Jazz, it's really just two guys. It's um. Oh, where is he? Derek Favors at 5,600. Gets a good matchup tonight and doesn't need, like, an excessive amount of minutes to get there. He only needs 30-ish for me to be happy. Um, he can get there in 26 minutes. Um, doesn't even need the double-double. Um, but even, like, this 11 and 8, uh, I, I would accept it. I mean, I'm not going to be super ecstatic about an 11 and 8 from Derek Favors at 5,600, but it's not going to kill me. Um... 9-2 and two will kill me, like he did against OKC, but um, I'm going to hope that we don't get, like, this garbage performances that he was doing, and we get more of this, but uh, he's no, he's by no means, like, a lock into my lineup. Like, he's not a lock and load into my lineup, so, um, but he is, like, the one Utah guy that I have a lot of interest in. Uh, Donovan Mitchell is the other guy. I have a lot more interest in Mitchell on uh, FanDuel, but at 6,900 on DraftKings, needs about 40 Needs about 40 uh, to get there. Uh, 35 is the 5x value. 40 is about personal value, my personal value. So he needs about that to get there. Uh, and I think I think he can get there against the Cavs, especially if it stays close. Uh, if I decide to play Mitchell, I'll probably run it back with LeBron just to make sure, because that would mean the game stayed close. Uh, and so moving on to Memphis, we got Conley out. Um, and we got Parsons out. Jermichael Green is questionable. To play, I doubt we'll get news on this before lock. It's an hour and a half after lock. I doubt we get news on it. If we do, and he happens to sit along with Brandon Wright, I think yeah, Brandon Wright is probable, which kind of annoys me. Um, if he was out and Jermichael Green was out, I'd go back to Jarrell Martin. But Jarrell Martin's forty eight five hundred, so if Wright and Green play, I don't want to play him. Uh, Marcus All is interesting against the Warriors, but I probably won't go there. My lean is Tyreek Evans at 7,700. He's been doing it all for him the last couple of games, and he needs about 40, 40 to make me happy. Um, it, it's not, I guess, 42 ish to make to to, to get there. And uh, even in blowouts, I think he's still going to play into the 30s for minutes. Uh, but they also haven't really been blown out by anybody in a while even like they played golden state they got beat by 13 but they didn't get like waxed um and, but they haven't been playing like the upper echelon of talent like the lakers and phoenix um but they're they're back they're back at it at golden state again so we'll see if they can hang around and keep this game close um my issue is that curry is back um so that creates issues it just means they're gonna do they're gonna be a whole lot better of a team uh, with Curry back, and uh, looks like everybody should be available. Uh, I think Livingston, Iguodala, Clay, Curry, Caspi are all probable to play. 
Um, I'm really going to have to think about Tyreek. I really love Tyreek tonight, but the game's got to stay relatively close for me to like get any value out of Tyreek. And I don't know if the Grizzlies can do it. Uh, on Golden State with Curry back, I have no interest in anybody, so we can just move on. Um, but yeah, Tyreek going to be the biggest decision for me all night. And then the late night hammer. 9 o'clock, Philly, Denver, Joel Embiid out. Uh, and Robert Covington will give it a go. Um, he was listed as doubtful, and then he got cleared to play, which was weird. Um, so I don't know how many minutes Bob Covington is going to play. It's an issue because I want to play him at 5,700 with no Embiid. But I don't know what exactly we're going to get out of him. My issue is is that he's just not been shooting. So I'll probably end up fading him on DraftKings. But I do love him. Like, I love Bob Covington tonight. But, man, if he shoots two times or eight times, eight, eight times, he might get it done in eight if he shoots better. But five times, man, I, I, I can't do it. That's a shot every seven and a half minutes. Like... No, I can't do it. So that's the hard part about that. So we'll see. We'll see about Bob Covington. I'm going to have to worry about that all night. He should draw like a Trey Lyles defense, so I'm not really worried about that. Uh, but, man, I want to play Covington. I'm playing Ben Simmons tonight, I think. he. I'm going to go with him over LeBron. It, it's insane because he needs like 45 or 50 to really get there for me. But... I think I'm going to take the plunge. I'm going to take the lit risk with Ben Simmons. Um, this is the lowest price on Ben Simmons we've had since October. And I think I'm just going to I'm going to pay it and I'm going to take the leap uh, with Ben Simmons. I mean, it's not like it's been forever since he's had a 50-point game, 47 here. It, it's just four bad games in a row. It's four bad games in a row where he shot poorly twice he shot poorly twice and then he just didn't get enough like boards and assists in the other ones and I, I i think tonight in denver we're gonna be playing fast it's gonna be fast it's gonna be furious i'm gonna take the risk with ben simmons tonight i think um it's, it's not like a preferred like elite play where i'm like oh man you gotta play ben simmons but i really do like ben simmons tonight and i will probably be playing him uh, Dario Saric, I'll be playing Dario Saric, um, not even going to hesitate or think about it with Embiid out, it's, it's lock and load Saric when Embiid is out, they refuse to mump his price, like, he had this bad game to kind of help keep his price low against the Knicks, but other than that, like, when has Saric not reached 30? He had 27 against Sacramento, which wouldn't have killed you, uh, and he's going to play in the 30 minutes, so, I will be, I'm close to going all in on this game. Like, let me just stack this game up in cash and GPPs, and we'll just live with the consequences of whether, I think it stays close, so. Uh, you got to try to figure out what the heck is going to go on here with the three other bigs, because Sarge is going to take 30 minutes, and then you've got, uh, we'll say Sarge plays 35, that's 13 more minutes, 51, 61 more minutes for everybody else. Uh, so... There's 61 minutes for Holmes, Booker, and Amir Johnson. Uh, it's just a question of, does, Rah or does Rashawn Holmes even get on the court tonight? Um, I assume he gets on, but for how many minutes? I would think Booker plays into the 20s. I would think Amir Johnson gets his regular run of 18. I'll go with 18 minutes. So if we got 18 minutes for Amir, we've got 20 two so there's 40 that leaves like 20 minutes left for Holmes. i i guess Holmes can get there I guess Holmes can get there in 20 minutes i mean it's just it's just super dicey with rashawn Holmes. if he because they have booker now i don't know if i love rashawn Holmes. he's the most expensive i almost just want to play trevor booker over him i mean but Booker has been like super non-shooting the ball. It's just a tough. It's a tough ask. I'm probably just not playing any of them, and I'll just let it ride with Ben Simmons and Dario Saric, and maybe a JJ Redick. I do like Redick. Uh, he's gonna have to shoot the ball without him beat out, um, and so I do like Redick. He needs about 31, 32. I mean, it's now no lock to get there, but uh, with him beat out, he's usually he's usually at least stable for 25 5x value. Uh, TJ McConnell, a little bit of interest there. Um, he's been on fire the last couple of games, but 
can't put too much stock into that. If he plays 34, 29, 34 minutes, then I'm all in on TJ McConnell. I might just go to TJ McConnell. I might fade the the big guys because Denver can go small. I'll get into that in a minute. But uh, Bayless, I think Bayless is going to play in the 20s. It's just kind of a tough ask uh, to, to see how this is going to go. Um, if I guarantee that Bob Covington was going to just play reduced minutes... I asked both of the beat writers on Twitter. Like, they're not very helpful. The Philly beat writers are not helpful. Like, they they couldn't even spend two two seconds to tell me. I just wanted to know, like, is is Bob Covington like? Is he good to go? Is he like partially good to go? Yeah, they couldn't help me at all. So I don't have much on Bob Covington. If I knew Bob Covington was kind of meh probably not the greatest i would probably go tj mcconnell but because i don't know i I probably have to fade mcconnell but i do really like mcconnell so it's kind of a catch-22 and so i'll have to figure that out so moving on final team of the day is the denver nuggets jamal murray is 6200 i don't think i can go there i mean he's been nice but i think he's his his expectation is more around this 36 33 which wouldn't kill me it'd be nice but it's not going to kill me he's not playing 46 minutes and he probably isn't playing 35 um i assume emmanuel moutier is good to go yeah emmanuel moutier is good to go it was not available in those two games where jamal murray went off um in minnesota where he played 46 minutes and then when he played 35 moutier only played two minutes which i believe yeah, he was, it was his first game available back from injury. I'm not going to put too much stock into that. Um, I'm going to assume that maybe he plays around 10. I know they're trying to phase him out, and they're trying to play Tory Craig, which is just driving me insane why Tory Craig is getting run over some of these guys. But um, I assume Moudier gets some run, uh, more run tonight. And so I, I'm just not going to – I'm not going to chase this Jamal Murray. Two of these ga- – one of these games um, – he didn't play. Moutier didn't play. This one, Moutier played just two minutes, and then in this one, Moutier wasn't available. Was wasn't available again? I don't think so. Uh, unless he got a, it's always hard on these DraftKings logs to see if he got a DNCP uh, or a DNPCD. I don't think he got a DNPCD. Yeah, he's got restrict. Okay. I don't know. I'm not playing. I'm not chasing that Jamal Murray. I don't think Jamal Murray has 40 point upside on like a regular night at 6,200. So I'm just not going to do it. Just not going to do it. Trey Lyles is interesting. I'll probably end up playing him. Uh, Not chasing the 40 point game, but just chasing like the consistency because he's been pretty consistent. So I'll probably end up going there because he's got consistency and then he's got upside. He should draw covington or if he draws simmons it's a better matchup if he draws sarich it's probably even a better matchup so uh, i do like trey lyles tonight Plumley has been playing pretty good ball um at 4600 but i probably won't go there uh and then wilson chandler is interesting he's he's not really getting he didn't get there in the last game but he's been getting there um and he's playing minutes he's playing a lot of minutes and so I might look to play Wilson Chandler tonight. Um, Because if you stack the hero, I'll stack this guy. Let me stack this game up for you. The other guy, let me finish this real quick. Denver, I like Nikola Jokic, okay? I like Jokic. So we can plug him in at center. And let's go ahead and stack this game up. So you can get Ben Simmons in there. Let's put put Ben Simmons at small forward. Actually, I probably want to play Ben Simmons at point guard if you're stacking this game up. So Ben Simmons at point guard. Uh, at shooting guard, maybe you go take a J.J. Redick, small forward, take a Bob, or we'll take Lyles here, and then we'll take Sarich at power forward. Leaves us a guard and a forward. We got about 5,500 left. If you take like a T.J. McConnell and a Wilson Chandler there, um, it leaves you about 7,400 left, and you can get like a Draymond Green or an Aaron Gordon uh, if – uh, Damian Lillard is out. It lets you get a CJ McCollum, and that's not a bad looking lineup there. Uh, if that game shoots out in Denver, which I, I think it should, um, it allows CJ McCollum, and then you have the CJ McCollum 
uh, play that has 50 point upside. One note that I should make is that New Orleans has been allowing, they've gone up, I believe it was like 104, 108. They're now allowing like 112 points a game. So that's interesting for the Knicks tonight, but I probably still won't go to any Knicks. I just don't love anyone on the Knicks. But yeah, that's going to do it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry for the late upload. I promise we'll get them up better and faster. Uh, starting next week um, so I'll have an NFL video either tonight or tomorrow morning as well as maybe breaking down NBA slate for tomorrow so I'll catch you guys later peace out